Morbid Angel, Gateways to Annihilation. Riddler, please complete the thought for me. Here's a good one. No. Slower, doomier, heavier, and darker than anything they've ever done. Just look at that beautiful artwork. I've always loved Dan Seagrave and the amount of detail he puts in his artwork. This is no exception. With the CD, you get a little portion of the artwork, and then if you unfold the booklet, you get an even bigger piece of it. But the vinyl version tends to have the whole picture. Just look into that vortex. Whatever you might think is behind it, He Who Sleeps is probably the soundtrack to it. It opens up with a pretty needless intro. I say needless because, after all, it is Morbid Angel. But then, Summoning Redemption hits you in the balls with a sledgehammer, and if you don't have balls, then it hits you in the ovaries. And if for whatever reason you don't have ovaries, then it hits you in the flaps. You'll notice right away that the heaviness is there with the guitar triplets in complete sync. Steve Tucker is on this album, and so is Eric Rootin Tootin Rootin on the electric guitar. Upon listening to Summoning Redemption, you'll notice that Steve Tucker is growling his guts out like always. It's like his vocals are a little more projected than David Benson's, but they're deep enough to sustain the heaviness and the violence of the music. I, I am the void of light. Silence. I am the god of joy. I, I am the all you see. Anyway, this song is around seven minutes long, but it's structured nicely, it tells a story, and it has fantastic solos from both guitarists. Oh yeah, that's a major highlight with Gateways. This is how you begin a death metal album. Angel Storm! Another slow but active song. You'll notice at this point in the album that speed isn't exactly the essence. Uh, generally with Gateways to Annihilation, the songs are longer and slower than usual. But when they do speed things up, it's faster than ever. About three minutes into Ageless, you get to hear the album's first blast beat. You can tell that Pete Sandoval has been rehearsing like mad for that one moment. What few blast beats do exist on the album serve as a foundation to the slower, hypnotic, tremolo riffing. And then you have the song, He Who Sleeps. Reminds me of a slower god of emptiness. Oh, I love the riff. He Who Sleeps and To the Victor the Spoils shows brilliant timing, riffing, and rhythm changes. Just the intricate playing in the first 50 seconds of Victor is mind-blowing. The guitar solos on this album are always a great payoff, especially with this song. It's like Trey and Eric both use different sounds and techniques for each solo, but they also trade off and play together. What a great chemistry between guitar players. And then there's opening of the gates. Oh my! Heaviest song on the album. Just the first minute is enough to get your head rolling. The band is intricately playing together in an unconventional manner, but then the lead guitar comes creeping in, and whatever demon has possessed you is possessing you even more! God of the Forsaken is the album's ender. It is the craziest song on the album. It has speed, great guitar solos, Pete's commando drumming, and Steve Tucker going postal. Definitely a classic Morbid Angel song. It seems like Dave Vincent works well for the albums that he's on, and Steve Tucker works well for the albums that he's on. Steve tends to sound deeper and more gutsy. Now, Dave's vocals on Altars of Madness, Bless of the Sick, Covenant, you know, they were more shrieky. They're also a bit more demonic, but not quite as heavy as Steve's. Who's the better vocalist? Take your pick. Something you'll notice about Gateways is that the drum production is really clean. Some may prefer it a little underproduced, but what's cool about this album is that you can hear every hit on the drums. The drum tunings are on satisfying notes, and everything sounds clear. Often in death metal, you'll have the drum sounds muddled in the mix. Or there will be so much musical activity going on that you hardly get to notice what's going on with the drums. Not the case here. It's busy musically, and you can still hear every drum hit. Of course, the drums are slightly triggered. That may cause some problems for some old-school listeners, but... The imagination in Morbid Angel is what helps make the band so powerful. It's like they'll write songs about ancient demons, black arts, and evil things, and then they'll make a good effort to match what they're writing about by making the music as sinister, heavy, or as creepy as possible. If it's not with metal, then the interludes will create mysticism with the sound effects, the noise, the synths, the occasional acoustic guitars. With Gateways, Morbid Angel does what they've always been able to do, but in a much more thorough and refined way. Upon the first listen or two, the album's a little hard to get into. But the more you listen to it, the more you get to appreciate the better elements of it, such as the lyrics and the guitar work. My favorite songs from this one are Opening of the Gates and God of the Forsaken. 
If you prefer the earlier, more chaotic albums, such as Alters and Madness and Blessed Are the Sick, then go for it. But if you appreciate the heavier, darker, and more complex side of Morbid Angel, then Gateways to Annihilation is for you. <laughs>